Hey now, brawlers, it's time for another Board Game Brawl review with Nick Minahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Hey people, today we're going to take a look at Kimo Mimi Panic from Japanime Games. Uh, this is actually a game that has been out for quite a few years in Japan, but Japanime Games, uh, being who they are, it's right there in the name, they are bringing over as many games from Japan as they possibly can, and they got around to Kimo Mimi Panic. Now, this is a hidden role deduction game. It is reminiscent of Werewolf. I would think you would say that's where it's got inspiration from, but there are quite a few differences to it as well. You and the other players, now stick with me here, you and the other players are cute, anthropomorphic, uh, not just cat girls, but animal girls in general, living in this little town uh, as an offshoot of a human town, and you have these jewels that... Uh, uh, are like your requirement for living in the town, but there is an, an evil thief, the crescent moon thief or the full moon thief, who are trying to steal your jewels and get you exiled from the community. I'm going to talk more about that when we come back, but that's the general premise of the game. Essentially, one player is a thief, the other players are not thieves, and they have to discover who the thief is before the thief eliminates all of them, but of course there are a few other roles that are thrown in there to throw a wrinkle into the works, or a wrench into the works would probably be a better way to say that. Let me give you a brief look at how the game is played, then we're going to come back, I'll let you know what I think. Kimo Mimi Panic is a competitive, team-based, secret role deduction game for four to eight players. One player is secretly the great thief Crescent Moon, attempting to steal the jewelry of all the townsfolk of Moke Moke. Almost all of the other players, led by Detective Shamrock, are citizens with their own quirks trying to get to the bottom of the mystery and protect their jewels, though one of them may also be an informant with her own agenda. At the beginning of the game, make one player a facilitator. Now, this is not a moderator. The facilitator takes part in the game like everyone else, but they will help set up the deck and read aloud to the players when necessary. Every game of Kimo Mimi Panic must have certain essential cards in play, but other than that, you have some leeway in setting up. There are two broad categories of cards, roles and characters. Roles are the most important thing in the game. Your role is kept secret until either you are eliminated or the game ends. It determines your win condition. Once you're dealt your roll card, it's placed face down with a decoy jewelry card on top of it. This is essentially a hit point. If you are robbed, you lose the decoy first. If you're robbed again, the thief gets the real thing and you will reveal your card and get eliminated from the game. Either that or you fulfill the win condition and win the game. In every game, there must be a crescent moon thief and only in an eight player game will you use a second thief, the full moon thief. Both do the same thing. During the appropriate moon phase, as determined by the type of thief, you will commit a burglary against another player. Your victory condition is to eliminate all but one citizen, or, in an eight-player game, all but the other thief. Two to five players are citizens. They all have the same goal. At the end of the game, there must only be either two citizens or one citizen and an informant. Some citizens have special personalities and therefore special abilities. For instance, the tenacious citizen, when eliminated, will stick around until the next day. The short-tempered citizen will force another player to lose their decoy. One player may be the informant. If the informant is ever eliminated, every other player loses their decoys, hastening the end of the game. But the informant will only win if she can make it all the way to the end of the game and be alone with the thief. She wins alone, and the thief, and everyone else, loses. To set up roles, you'll set the thief aside and replace her with the citizen, together with the informant and however many other citizens you're using. If you have two thieves, replace with two citizens. Shuffle these cards and remove one or two at random without looking at them. Then put the thief or thieves back in the deck, shuffle, and deal them out face down to each player. They'll look at the card and place it back down underneath a decoy card. By doing this, you are making sure no one knows that the informant is actually in the game or not. If you're using citizens with special powers, you also can't be sure which ones are actually in play. Character cards are different. These are always public information and will give you a special power to use during the game, which is either always on or limited use. One player must always be Detective Shamrock. 
During the starting phase of the game, one other player must reveal to you whether or not they're a citizen. If she gets a chance to be leader later in the game, she'll get to do it again with someone else. Other than her, you have freedom to choose which other characters to use, and you have 27 different options. You can do it randomly, choose particular characters, or use suggested setups from the rulebook. Regardless, characters are always face up in front of the player. Every character has a different special ability. For example, Lieutenant Teresa can skip voting once per game and force another player to lose a decoy. Barabara, Bara, the influencer, can force everyone to vote I once per game. And Mindy, the archaeologist, can claim someone else's lost decoy as her own, again, once per game. The last bit of setup is the moon card. One side is the crescent moon, the other is the full moon. At the start of the game, it's flipped crescent side up and given to the player to the left of the detective player. That player is the current leader for the round, and the crescent side of the card means that the crescent thief will commit a burglary that very same night. After the setup, begin the game with the starting phase, which is where Detective Shamrock will use her power. Every player except the player Shamrock chooses and Shamrock herself will close their eyes. The other player will either make an AOK sign to indicate they're a citizen or cross their arms to make an X if they are not, meaning that they're either a thief or an informant, but Shamrock doesn't know for sure. After everyone opens their eyes, the Shamrock player must reveal what she learned and can't lie. The group can then discuss who they want to accuse of being the thief. After a brief discussion, the leader for the round will point the target card at another player they suspect of being the thief. Everyone will vote simultaneously, and if more than half the players vote I, that player loses their decoy, or if they have no decoy, they are eliminated and will flip their roll card over. After that, if the moon is in the right phase, the crescent moon thief will strike and commit a burglary. On full moon nights, there will be no burglary except in an 8 player game. To start a burglary, put the target card in the center of the table. The facilitator tells everyone to extend their hand over the card and close their eyes. Then he tells whoever the thief is to open their eyes and point the target card at the person they want to rob, then close their eyes again. Then everyone opens their eyes again. Whoever the target card is pointing towards has been robbed and will lose a decoy or be eliminated. After this, the moon card is flipped to its other side and passed to the next player in clockwise order, who is now the leader. Start another day phase. The game continues until either the thief is eliminated and all the citizens win, even posthumously, so to speak, or all but two non-thief players are eliminated, in which case either the thief or the informant wins. That is Kimo Mimi Panic. Well, I think it's fair to say that without Werewolf, Kimo Mimi Panic wouldn't exist. But I think it's also fair to say, uh, at least in my opinion, since that's my review, that Kimo Mimi Panic improves upon the original Werewolf. I know some people are going to find that really contentious because Werewolf is some sort of uh, sacred cow to some people. But I've never liked it. I thought it was, at best, an average game. And you had to have the exact right group of people to play it with. Uh, but some iterations of Werewolf are absolutely terrible. <laughs> uh, and if you have the wrong group, it's terrible. Kimo Mimi Panic keeps it very simple. Keeps the player count low, which I think is fine. How often are you going to have 30 people together? And uh, it lets everyone be involved. Keeps it fast. Keeps it simple. And it's just, in my opinion, a better version of it. Even though it also has some rough edges. Now, let's start off talking about the artwork and the theme. Some people are going to be immediately turned off by the anime style artwork. Of course, if you know me and my channel, I don't care. I, I, I like uh, anime manga style artwork, so it's fine for me. I will say, however, <laughs> that there is some tonal dissonance going on with the artwork that is not a big deal, but I immediately notice it, and so do the other people that I played it with. Cards are either... They're, they're all anime girls, younger looking girls with animal ears and tails and things like that. Fine. Most of them are very innocent looking. Some of them, a pretty good chunk of them, have blatant fan service to varying degrees. But you can have one card that's just like, oh, innocent looking, anime schoolgirl, whatever. Then the next card is a woman, a grown woman, have wearing an incredibly skimpy top and bottom, like almost showing everything, just like, well, pow! compared to the last card and uh for no seeming reason and a different artist too like there's a few different artists they used uh for the game 
Uh, and this is not Japan made games. This is whoever the original Japanese publisher was. They just did the same artwork. And it's just like, why? Choose one or the other. Y- you can have one. I'm not a prude. That's fine. I'm totally okay with fan service. But decide. <laughs> Don't mix the two. Don't cross the streams. Minor complaint. Another minor complaint would be with the theme. Now, I actually think the theme is cute and, again, different than most of the other um, hidden roll deduction games we've seen. But it's like you are in this magical town of animal people, and they're all girls for some reason, and uh, you have these special jewels that you wear, and that's what the thieves are going after. Okay, and the, the jewels might get stolen by the thief. Well, that's terrible. You could have stopped there with the plot. Instead, the plot says, if you <laughs> lose your jewels, in other words, not the decoy, but the actual jewels, you're eliminated from the game, and thematically, you're exiled from the town. Why? That doesn't make any sense. That's that's so cruel. That's like, oh, you just got robbed, and now you have to leave. Like, oh my god, I'm, I'm so sorry. That was terrible. You lost your most valuable possession. The jewels that we all have, it's so awful. Oh, get out! Get out right now. I can't be associated with you anymore. We want you out of the town. Like, that's victim shaming. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm being a little bit jokey, but <laughs> I did notice, and I thought it was pretty funny. Now, about the game itself... Uh, What I like the most about the game, number one, no moderator. Uh, There is a facilitator, but all the facilitator really does, and you don't even have to declare someone as a facilitator ahead of time if you don't want to, just says whenever you have to close your eyes or, you know, make some sort of decision like that, the facilitator will be the one to do it so that, you know, four to eight people don't have to memorize a little tiny script, and it's not a big deal. It happens a couple times per game. Um, So I like that. They, they, They have the same... Impacted in the game as everyone else. I take part in the game just like everyone else. It works great. Um, I like I like the fact that there's a lower player count. I don't think you need to be playing this type of game with 30, 40 people. And, with, uh, and it actually works well. Um, so first off, I'll, I'll mention this. Uh, we actually played a couple games and recorded them. So we'll be able to see those in a few days. Um, and we just did it with uh, five players. But uh, I ended up playing a third game with the maximum player count of eight. And it still worked pretty good. I mean, you have the two thieves, so it's a bit weird, but it also means that it actually goes at a faster pace. The game scales to keep the game moving quickly, like especially like when things like the informant being found happens. Everyone else loses their decoy. Well, now you're in sudden death, essentially. And so there's lots of little things like that in the game to keep it moving, which I really like. It's hard to get bogged down like you would in other types of games like Werewolf, so I appreciate that. Another thing, tons of roles. 27 roles. I'm sorry, character cards is what I mean to say. Characters and roles are different. 27 characters, each with a different special ability. Now, a lot. to be fair, a lot of them add up to like, I get to say all votes are negated, or I get to say all votes are not negated, but they are all yes votes. Or, you know, they're not dramatically different from each other. But that's still different. And it still gives, when you mix in different ones, even in a four-player game, it means you're going to have a different game than... Uh, the other games you played. It just means total variety, and I really like that. Uh, I also like the idea of the informant, but there's always that thing of, like, what is, are they in the game? Are they not? Uh, it gets down to this weird thing where, like, the thief wants to find and eliminate the informant as fast as possible in particular, because if it gets, the thief wants there to be another citizen, because that's, I mean, well, the thief wants to get down to just him and, or her and another citizen, but not the informant. I like that pressure in the game. Uh, It's interesting. Uh, It's just that whole Shadows Over Camelot, are they in the game or not type of thing, sort of a traitor element, where they they behave like a citizen, but they're actually an informant. I like that too. And uh, the whole thing with the the moon phases, in a lower player count game, you have some breathing room every single round. So you still have to do the villager thing of like, we got to vote for someone, which is kind of a bummer. <laughs> it still doesn't make sense thematically. Well, I don't know if you're actually the thief, but we got to get rid of somebody. Uh, but okay, except that in werewolf games, that's going to happen. Uh, at least with anything less than eight players, you have a breathing room every other round where the thief doesn't burgle somebody. It sounds funny to say burgle somebody. Also, I think some people I played with expressed some concern about the whole decoy system. How you effectively have two hit points. You get eliminated once, you just lose your decoy, get, or you know, get voted on or burgled once, you just lose your uh, decoy. 
happens a second time, then you're eliminated. I like that um, in wake of the fact that you might just get randomly voted on, at least you have that amount of cover. It also means that, uh, I mean, you could just get one-two punched and that kind of sucks. <laughs> like, immediately voted on and then burgled. But if you survive, it does mean that you are now put more on edge and you might put a stronger effort towards making a case for yourself. You might just panic and incriminate yourself even more, even if you're not actually the thief or the informant. But <laughs> it's nice to have that bit of cover. And so I think this is another twist from the original werewolf formula that I think works in the game's favor as opposed to working against it. Though, again, some people I played with had a different opinion on that. Uh, so other than the rough edges of the theme and the artwork and some of the, the same things from Werewolf that carry over that I'm not totally keen on, like just randomly getting rid of people, um, I like the game. I mean, it's, it, its quickness and ease are basically its best assets, and that's not to be underestimated. Um, on top of the fact that it's got cute anime girls, which I'm still a sucker for, I'm sorry, even though... I wish the art was more consistent, <laughs> but I won't harp on that anymore. Uh, check it out when you have the chance, Kimo Mimi Panic. Uh, I think it's a nice little side addition to everyone's Hidden Roll Deduction collection. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. And make sure to check out our sponsor, Board Game Bliss, where you can find an amazing selection of games from around the world. BoardGameBliss.com. Thanks for your support.